What's up guys? Chasing up new 80s revolution down in the cave. Down in the nerd cave for another video. What are we doing tonight? Well, it's throwback night tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight we're doing an old-fashioned pickups video. That's right. We go back to the early days of the channel, the very beginnings of YouTube, two years ago, when the New 80s Revolution began. We would often have pickup videos where I would show you my hauls from flea markets and toy shows and thrift stores. And that was kind of, you know, that was kind of the foundation of the channel. And then, uh, I don't know, I just kind of stopped doing them. And, I, and I, you know, thrift stores, thrift stores these days are, uh, for me anyways, in my area, kind of a waste of time. Um, I don't do thrift stores really that much anymore. There was a point when this channel first began that I was going a couple times a week to four or five different thrift stores. And doing okay, bringing back stuff here and there. You know, definitely, definitely got a good history of some thrift store pickups. Um, but the, you know, here those days are kind of over, and um, especially my Goodwills, which for some reason um, are un, uh, of the belief that everything is a collector's item and everything is worth way more than it really is. So I don't even really bother with those places anymore, but we do have lots and lots of fun stuff to show you guys um, tonight, including, so these are, the majority of these are from a, uh, a local toy show, a Rochester, New York toy show, toy show. And it's an, uh, um, a show that goes on twice a year, and it's big. It's pretty big. It's at uh, it's at the Village Gate Mall, which means nothing to you guys, or Village Gate Square, Village Gate Plaza. I don't know. And uh, it's just a big toy show. Two floors, lots of tables, lots of vendors, um, and so I hit that up. You know, usually once a year, maybe twice a year, and and I usually come home with some good stuff but what's happening now is i'm you know i'm starting to narrow down my um what i'm gonna buy you know five years ago i could go to a toy show and everything was appealing um and i would just grab so much random stuff and, and that's when I was picking up a lot of board games, but I've pretty much maxed out on, on board games. Um, that's when I would grab some lunch pals. I've pretty much maxed out on lunch pals. You know, so the days of going there and just, you know, just grabbing anything and everything, those days are gone. And now when I go to these places, I'm, I'm, I'm not looking for one thing specific, you know, but I'm looking for, you know, I've narrowed down my want list. So this time around, uh, I went looking, you know, for some Rambo items. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to knock off that line, the Rambo, the Coleco Rambo line. Um, I was looking for, um, I don't know, G should, should I say G.I. Joe? Am I, am I looking for G.I. Joe yet? Has it begun? Has the madness, the craziness begun of tackling the 80s G.I. Joe line? Uh, it has. It has begun. I will finish the Rambo line first, and then I will move on to G.I. Joe's. But anyway, um, and and then when I'm going now, I'm, I'm looking for, you know, grail items. And if you've been watching the channel, you know that there's a list of what I call grails. And these are items that I have to have in my collection. Um, Fireball Island, the board game, was a grail. Got that. Um, 
the Dukes of Hazard car from the 70s or the, the very early 80s was a grail. Got that. The Michael Knight kit car um, and figure grail item. Got that. Um, and there's there's several more grail items that I need uh, that I want to add. And, and so I was able, you see, friends, I was able to get a grail item and begin the collection of a grail uh, items. I, 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 was, I, I was able to begin a grail collection and I was able to grab a grail item from this toy show. So I'm super excited about that. Then, later on tonight, on this very episode, after we go through the pickups, I'm going to unbox something that has been sealed for, you know, 32 years or so. Uh, yeah, I think it's 32 years. Eh. Since 1989. It's been sealed since 1989, and tonight I'm going to open it because I'm insane. Who would open a toy that's been sealed since 1989? With you. So, let's let's get going into these pickups. Oh, that's good. All right. Well, the first the first grail piece. So when I say grail piece, this is a whole collection of stuff and it's it's on my grail list. Um, and I got an item that goes along with that collection and I was able to pick up for very cheap, five bucks, five bucks cheap. The King of Cartoons carded figure from the Pee Wee's Playhouse line. The Pee Wee's Playhouse playset and the accompanying figures and accessories are grail items for me. The collection is not going to be complete until I have Pee Wee's Playhouse and all of the figures and accessories that go along with that line. And I was able to grab the King of Cartoons for five bucks. Now, he's, he's packaged. You know I don't really like packaged stuff. But uh, these figures are usually cheap. They're usually in like $5 dump bins at toy shows. I fully plan on getting a loose King of Cartoons, probably in a batch, probably in a lot. And then I'll just keep this guy carded. If for some strange reason I never come across a loose King of Cartoons and I've got like everything else, then I'll yank this guy out of the package and just go ahead and include him. But um, originally $3.99 at Toys R Us. You know I like my stickers. And at one point it was marked down to $0.80. Ah, <laughs> uh, what, we, what we didn't know then. All right, so that's item number one. Item number two, um, I've pretty much considered the Ghostbusters line complete, the real Ghostbusters from Kenner, um, and soon, eventually, as we make our way around the room, um, I'm going to you know, show you in detail the entire real Ghostbusters collection that, again, I now consider complete. I consider it complete because... Uh, I don't want any more. There's, there's monsters that I don't want, um, like larger mouth, sort of, uh, I don't know, they look like alligators, purple, there's like a purple alligator looking thing that's a monster. I, I'm good. I got a ton of, I got pretty much, I, I have every figure except the final line, which we'll talk about in a second. I, I got it. I'm good. I'm good with the real Ghostbusters. The real Ghostbusters, I'm done. The final series, the Ecto Glow Heroes, um, you can get lucky and find one without accessories for 
30, 40 bucks sometimes. But for the most part, those Ecto Glow Heroes are selling with their accessories for over $100 a piece. And all they are is another Kenner Ghostbuster figure. They're just glowy. They're, you know, they, they glow in the dark. I don't, I don't need to spend 125 bucks for another Peter Venkman when I have five of them. I don't need that last series. I'm good with the real Ghostbusters. But I never had a Slimer figure. And now, I have a Slimer figure. I didn't go to the toy show looking for Ghostbuster stuff, but this little guy was just sitting right on the table. He was ten bucks. I'm that's fine. And I, I I'm not entirely sure what this is, but this this came with the Slimer. The Slimer attaches to it. I don't know what this is. I, I don't recall. Maybe you guys can tell me. He doesn't he doesn't like pop off or anything. He doesn't go flying off. So. I don't think. No. So I don't really know what this is, but I got a Slimer. And now my real Ghostbusters line is really, really done. I'm really done. Slimer. Uh, uh, a couple of these were from a toy show, but I figured I'd show them all to you now because I, I haven't talked about these yet. Of course, you know, I'm getting ready to tackle the G.I. Joe line. Um, and with that comes the comic books. The comic books, the cartoon, the toys, or comic books, toys, cartoon, I forget which order they came. I know the comic book came first. Um, they're all connected, right? So if you're going to collect the figures, you got to read the comic books. you got to watch the cartoon. And I plan on doing all of that. So... I'm not a comic book guy. I've never read a comic book. But I'm starting to collect the G.I. Joe comics. So I grabbed a couple from the toy show. They're usually great. They're usually cheap. They're, you, you, know, you go to any toy show and somebody, multiple people have those uh, comic book boxes all lined up. You thumb through them. They're like a buck to three bucks each. You bring your checklist. You get the ones you don't have. So for a couple bucks, I grabbed a few comics, but um, here's here's what I'm... I, I don't know what this is. Maybe 30. I, I, the earliest issue I have is number 5, and uh, the latest issue I have is 144. And I think there's like 168 or something. I think there was somewhere in the 160s for the G.I. Joe comic line. So there you go. I've got those. Now, an interesting thing about this that I cannot wait for to find, and I don't have it yet, but in one of these, or in three or four of them over, you know, three or four months, these are monthly, obviously, comic books, is the ad for the WWF Hasbro Sergeant Slaughter LJN style figure. That's where that figure was first advertised, and for the most part, that's where it was available. You could get the, you could get the Sergeant Slaughter figure by ordering it from a G.I. Joe comic. And like I said, I haven't come across it yet, but I can't wait to get that comic and open it up and bam, there's there's the order form for the Sergeant Slaughter LJN style figure. So that's kind of like a fun little, you know, fun little bonus part of, of the collection. So G.I. Joe comic books are becoming a thing. All right. I You know the thing with Guinness is that you can just you can drink the glass in in like three three sessions. Three drinking sessions. Glass is gone. So smooth, so delicious. Guinness. I'm not going to show these right now because I am going to have another sub-show of this channel, um, which will be, you know, the quest, the mission for G.I. Joe. Um, I will show you in multiple episodes my quest for a G.I. Joe collection, um, where I find the stuff, you know, maybe putting some vehicles together, 
as we build a display somewhere somewhere in this cave as we get our gi joe display going you're going to be a part of that i've decided that i want to i'm probably going to put a few long tables down the middle of this room and i and i'm probably going to build them myself because i want them to be the size that i want them you know plywood tops and you know legs and and i'm, I'm probably going to put them again across the middle of the room or down the middle of the room and I'm pretty much going to set up the G.I. Joes and the vehicles and the bases and all that stuff on these tables and have sort of a, a world going on. And then to get really ridiculous, any of the flying vehicles are going to hang from the ceiling on some fishing wire. Um, to me, that's that's the only way I can like properly display all this stuff in, in this room. Um, so you guys will be a part of that. So... Here, I have two um, complete G.I. Joe figures that I grabbed at the toy show for five bucks each, which is crazy. Uh, I got a figure, I mean, they're, as far as complete go, they only came with, I mean, they originally they only came with a weapon, so no backpacks, no other accessories. Um, I got a figure from 1985 and a figure from 1986. I know who they are. I don't want to give it away. I want to, I want to make that part of the G.I. Joe Quest series that I have not named yet. But anyway, I grabbed two loose, complete G.I. Joes to add to the one incomplete but rather expensive figure that I have. I'm on the hunt for the weapon. The weapon is about 15 bucks, but we'll save that for the other show. All right. Um, real quick, uh, I've always wanted these little Happy Meal uh, toys from McDonald's. These these particular ones turned into so they're they're food representations. So this is the quarter pounder with cheese. Remember back in the day when we got the Styrofoam McDonald's box. And these guys turn into um, really, you know, cheap. I can't even get his arm out, but, you know, little robots. Happy Meal toys. Good quality. You know, Happy Meal toys have actually, they're awesome now. I mean, they're great quality. Um, so we got this little guy. And there's a whole bunch. Um... I thought they were all from the early 80s. They're not. Uh, many of them, most of them are from 1990. Um, but some of them are from 88. And then the milk, the low-fat milk, is from 1982. And that turns into this thing, which I don't understand this. There's no, there's no head. There's just arms. But anyway, uh, milk. Oh, actually, I know. I figured it out. <laughs> You put her little arms out that way, and now she's got arms. All right, so we got the milk, we got the quarter pounder, we got you know a burger, uh, we got a couple drinks, pretty cool. We got another burger. We got the Big Mac. We got the Big Mac. We got my favorite, the chicken McNuggets. Uh, we got an order of fries. We got an ice cream cone, and then we got the. Uh, the classic hotcakes breakfast. And again, these all turn into little robots. But I've always wanted these. I've always, uh, you know, never really saw them anywhere. Or if I did, they were too expensive. Um, but I've always wanted those little Happy Meal smalls, as they say. Yeah, there it is. Three, three uh, guzzles gone okay um i'm gonna save well uh, all right, i'm gonna save the good stuff hang on this is all good stuff but a uh fan of the channel and and i i typically won't say who you are unless you're cool with me saying who you are and i didn't ask you so i don't know but a, a fan of the channel friend of the channel um was uh, actually a newer fan was watching one of my old wcw galoob figure videos where i 
mentioned that I needed Butch Reed from Doom. Still didn't have Butch Reed. And he was gracious and kind enough to send me a Butch Reed Galoob figure. And this is awesome because it completes my U.S. WCW Galoob collection. There's a few figures that I need from the UK, uh, UK releases, Series 2. But Doom, Butch Reed, teaming with Ron Simmons, I now have... Butch Reed, and I'm, I'm thrilled about that. I, You know, as long as I've been collecting Galoob figures, this little guy always always avoided me, always escaped me. And, uh, yeah, I, I could go on eBay right now and, and buy 12 of them, but I don't want to do that. That kind of ruins it, and they're overpriced. Um, so, thank you, new friend of the channel, for this awesome, awesome gift. Much, much, much appreciated, and he will, he's going to go over there with the rest of his Galoob friends in a minute. Another friend of the channel, a friend of mine, Xavier Sherwood, um, you've, you've heard of him before, you've seen him in the comments, and there's certainly been some videos where I show you uh, the, the, the graciousness, the kindness of Xavier and, and him uh, contributing to the, to the museum, to the cave, to the insanity um, I, I, you know, put up a post on one of the groups of, uh, that I'm in with Facebook. I, I found some old LJN, um, posts, ring posts for like an LJN ring. A lot of guys on this group that I'm in do, do ring customizing and, and, you know, repair. So everybody seems to always be looking for turnbuckles and, and ring posts. And so I put up a post that said that I had them. I didn't want to get paid. I just wanted to trade and one of the items that I was would accept and trade are old WWF magazines. And um, Xavier shot me a, a message and said, hey, I, I got some, I'll just give them to you. And and that's that's Xavier, and that's, that's, what he, that's who he is. Um, I am going to be sending him back a gift uh, that I, that's right there. I'm staring at it. It just needs to be packaged up and sent to you, my man. But Xavier added to the WWF Wrestling Magazine collection. Um, I'm collecting from, obviously, the beginning uh, to 1994. After that, I wasn't interested in the WWF. I stopped watching in 94. So I pretty much only want the magazines up till 94. And he, he shot me a, a, whole bunch of, a whole bunch of magazines. And, you know, that's pretty awesome. One of the ones in here, my favorite one in here, is a very old... WWF magazine. This is from uh, April, May of 1985. This is about the, uh, I'd say probably the fourth or fifth WWF magazine that was released. So this is, you know, I don't think it used to say on here, some of these early releases, it used to say which, which, um, which release it, you know, which magazine it was. Uh, volume three, number three. I don't know what that means. I don't know, volume three, number three. But this isn't, well, I, I don't think this is the third ever release magazine. It might be. It might be. I don't know. I gotta look. But this is a very, very early, very early release WWF magazine. And that was included in this batch, so that's awesome. Thank you very much, Xavier, of course, as always, for that. Okay. This is a big deal coming up here, guys. I got um, my grail. One of my grail items is a um, Mad Ball. If you remember, uh, 1985, um, Mad Balls came out. And Mad Balls were actually from the American Greetings Company. So, you know, the, the, the Hallmark style card company made these or created these and they were just basically um, gross out um, foam balls that you could collect and I've got one and not only do I got one I got one in the package <laughs> and I only paid $40 for this 
and I'm happy. <laughs> I am thrilled to finally be able to cross a mad ball off the list. You know, these guys sell loose and used and beat up for $40, $50, Carded, we're going, you know, we're going deep into the into the into the 120, 150 range, guys. 40 bucks from an amazing seller at the toy show. Um, for a mad ball that originally sold for three dollars and ninety nine cents at some store called James Way. So there we go. Another amazing grail item knocked off the list for super cheap. Forty bucks. A carded mad ball. Not the not the most pristine card. But I certainly don't care. Take a look at the other Mad Balls that were available. And if you remember, uh, last year or so, Mad Balls came out with... Um, Mad Balls re-released at Target. And I grabbed one of those. Not the same, obviously. And then they put out a, uh, a horror line that was a Best Buy exclusive. And I grabbed a few of those, and you saw that. But this... This is your this is your real deal carded 80s mad ball grail item checked off the list for 40 bucks. Thank you, thank you, thank you toy show guy who gave me an awesome deal. And I'll put his information down in the uh, he sells toys online on Facebook um, or through his website. I'll put his link to grab some uh, some toys from this awesome seller who who really loves to give me great deals. In fact, he's the guy that I bought the Michael Knight car from two years ago for only 60. Mad Balls. Grail off the list. Now, one more pretty awesome item before we get into the main event. You guys are fully aware that right over there is a pretty awesome 25-inch Zenith console TV from probably like 1986. I love old TVs. But it's not really something that you can just start, you know, collecting and, and you know, how much room do I really have for a collection of TVs? But I've lately, I've been, you know, wanting to grab some of these TVs. And there's one thrift store in town that still sells televisions. For the most part, the Goodwills, they've, they don't take TVs anymore. Uh, but there's one Salvation Army sort of smaller thrift store that still has a an electronic section that has multiple TVs. And, and I think that some of these TVs, like these old, not even old, but like the, um, after the tube style went out and, and you had those sort of flat CRT TVs, they were silver, um, the ones that everybody wants to play their, their um, retro games on, those are all over the floor there. And I've seen lately that those are selling for a lot, the, the, more than you'd think. And I think they're they're giving theirs away for like less than twenty bucks for these thirty-two inch, you know, thirty-seven inch, big bulky TVs that people are are still sort of interested in. Uh, I don't I don't even want those. The, to me, those are still too modern. Um, so when I saw this, I absolutely could not pass this up for all of $8.99. But I have now my second TV in my TV collection. <laughs> A 13 or 19 inch JC Penney's television. That's right. Uh, I don't know, does they have a year on it? It, well, it does, and you know what? I just noticed the year, and it's not quite as 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 retro as I thought. This is from 1993. 
Does that mean I hate it now? No, but I, I think I'm a little disappointed. But nonetheless, a JC Penny. I think I think that's the exciting part. The, the fact that it was a JC Penny model TV um, for eight dollars and ninety nine cents, and I like it, and it's and it's staying down here in the cave, and it's really straining my biceps right now. So I'm going to put it down because those biceps, they haven't been pumped in years, brother. All right. So I'm at the toy show and uh, I see, you know, a G.I. Joe vehicle box and they're everywhere. I mean, toy shows this this size, there's G.I. Joe Boxes everywhere, vehicle boxes, play sets, it's huge. They're everywhere, so that's not unusual. But um, I saw this one, and it was just sitting there, and I went over, and I looked at it, and I, and I just asked the guy, you know, what he had on and it, was, and he said 40 bucks. And and then I picked it up, and I looked at it, and, and it appears to be sealed. And I said, Has, is this sealed? And he said, yeah, you know, never, never opened, sealed. And he said, you know, I know it's not a it's not a pricey vehicle, but it's sealed. So I figured 40 bucks was a good price. And it and I'm just getting into this G.I. Joe line. So I thought like 40 bucks, geez, that might even be a little high. It's not. You know, this 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 item loose uh, loose with box still sells for about what I paid for it. But sealed, um, is it's about $129 sealed. So I grabbed it for $40 and I added the Cobra Piranha vehicle. Okay, so we have a Cobra vehicle, the Cobra Piranha. This is from the uh, 1989 line of figures and vehicles. And you're never going to find a more, I don't know, do we call it attractive? A more attractive toy line, uh, box art wise, than G.I. Joe. I mean, this, this is part of the draw for me is these boxes with this amazing art. Um, they're just awesome. And a major, you know, a major uh, hook, if you will. So, now, what's, what's so special about this? It's sealed. It is sealed. It appears to be sealed, okay? Um, now, what we're going to do tonight is we're going to open this thing and we're going to take a look at what's inside. Now, I hear some rattling around in there. It's been a long time since I was eight and got a G.I. Joe vehicle for Christmas. So I don't remember if the parts inside are supposed to be in a bag, if they're supposed to be tight. I don't know if they're supposed to be bouncing around like this. So, you know, this is going to be kind of like the uh, Geraldo Rivera opens Al Capone's vault. Yeah, that's a very, very deeply dated reference to the 80s. And you are a true fan of that decade, if you know what I'm talking about. We're, we're going to go for this. We're going to open this up. And, and we could be terribly disappointed this might have been opened already. This might have been put together. There might be decals all on this thing. It might not even be the G.I. Joe Piranha in there. I might have gotten duped. This package might have been opened and resealed. It doesn't look like it, but I don't know. So tonight, we're going to open up a toy that has been sealed since 1989. And a toy that I could sell... For about a hundred to a hundred and thirty bucks right now. 
but I'm not gonna. I'm gonna open it and we're gonna see what we got. And we're gonna do that with you right now. All right, guys. So here we go. Here she is. Your G.I. Joe Piranha. Your Cobra vehicle. Allegedly sealed. And let's let's find out what we got here, guys. Here we go. I don't want to I don't want to damage anything in here. So I am Okay. We're open. Now, what are we going to find, guys? I don't know. So far, so good. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. So far, so good. I think we did all right. Yeah. We did all right. We've got... A sealed, now opened, G.I. Joe Piranha vehicle. There's your blueprints for the Cobra Piranha. I am not going to put this together right now. Maybe I will. I don't know. Look at this. We've got, guys, these are always, I do not know what this is. Oh, that's the decal sheet. Excellent. Look at this. Look at this glorious, glorious checklist poster. Oh, this is awesome. This is awesome. This is in here. Man, oh man. I'm, I'm kind of speechless. So what we did was we just opened a sealed G.I. Joe Cobra Piranha vehicle from 1989. And we're looking at all the goodies. Yeah, that's fantastic. Alright. Well, there you have it. We have... The Cobra Piranha, and we have the hull bottom, and we have the seat engine area, and we are putting it together, I think. I don't know if I'm going to put this thing together right now, though. Well, maybe I am. All right, there's part one. We must add the engine cover as we pull it off of this sealed plastic glorious of this thing. Kind of snaps on, I think. Should snap on. Yeah, we're definitely not gonna I'm not gonna bore you with the with the put it together details. Oh, there we go. All right. We'll add the uh, spoiler, and then I think we'll probably wrap it up. Just because I don't want to. Oh, we're gonna put the put the top on. So those these clip in with these little clips. 
you obviously want to be careful of. There you go. So far, so good. And then we have the spoiler. Which looks like it snaps in right here. Again, these are a little old. They're not brittle by any means. But I, I certainly don't want to snap anything. That seems like it's pretty much pretty much in there. Yeah. So there we have it so far. A couple of guns to put on. Um, let's see. Yeah, what the heck. Let's keep it going, right guys? A couple of guns. Going there. And the other one. Going there. And then we have some antenna. And here's the antenna. We have one antenna two antenna and those are going to go in here there we go and they're kind of going to fit with some snug pressure and that one's a little tight there we go and then we gotta, gotta get this in there better. Okay. All right. Um, something called a depth charge and a launcher is supposed to go. Oh, somewhere. Let's see. In here, looks like. Just kind of fits in there. Sort of. Okay. And then the other one. I know that this is different for the, sh for, for the channel, guys, but I'm excited. Because I got a brand new sealed G.I. Joe vehicle. Um, short missiles on top. Where's the short missiles? I guess we're going to call these short missiles. And these are going to go right here. Like so. We'll get another short missile. Get off of this. Some of you guys are like, you know what you just did? You just opened a toy from 1989 to put it together and put on a shelf of a grown adult's cave. And that is exactly what I did. And I'm thrilled about it. So these long missiles will go here. That's snug enough. Put this little guy back. Okay. Get the other long missile in there and then we'll we'll wrap it up. There we go. Uh, what's left is... Uh, yeah. hmm. Okay. So these little, these little parts kind of would have driven me nuts as a kid if they kept falling off during my, my rough play. But 
we're not going to have to worry about that. So going forward, uh, all we have is a couple more parts, a couple more missiles that go underneath. And then, of course, the decals. Those glorious decals that I will spare you the pleasure of watching. But I will not spare you the pleasure of watching me put these last missiles on. Hopefully without knocking everything off off in the process. Now, the reason that those little side pieces come out so easily is because they are um, they're little weapons, right? So little depth chargers. So you're supposed to be able to the idea is that you're in the water, you have the guy sitting in the in the seat there, and he just flips one of these bad boys off into the water. Alright, so that is that. That is your Almost complete Cobra Piranha. Nothing is finished until we drop one of these guys on here. And uh, we'll be doing that tonight before bed. But there you have it, guys. A 1989 Cobra Piranha G.I. Joe vehicle. Sealed. Sealed since 1989. And now opened. What is this? Is this like a ring? If that's a ring, I might be wearing it. I don't see it as a part to the vehicle. This might be a ring, and I might have to put a sticker on it, and I might wear the ring. Just saying. Uh, I'll be back to wrap this up. Wow, so there you have it. Kind of an interesting little uh, unexpected bonus content, I suppose, or maybe content that you just completely skipped over and unsubscribed, I'm not sure, but you just saw me put together a Cobra Piranha. Uh, but first you saw me unbox or unseal a Cobra Piranha that had been, you know, unopened, untouched by non-G.I. Joe manufacturer human hands up until this point. And now you just watch me put it together. Gripping, gripping footage right there. So that's the pickups video. Uh, Wrestling with the Past is coming very, very soon. Um, we'll get back on the uh, toy room tour. We'll keep going with that. And uh, Chiller. Chiller's in 24 days. I'll be at the New Jersey Parsippany Hotel. Or the, the Hilton Parsippany in New Jersey for Chiller. Can't wait. Thanks all for hanging out with me. Was I crazy? Did I just, did I just you know, completely lose my toy collecting mind by opening up a sealed G.I. Joe? I don't know. I don't care. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon. Take care now. Good night.